Scratch has 145 blocks, from some that everyone uses to others that are completely forgotten. So in this video, I'll be ranking every single one of them from worst to best. This list will be divided into two videos, and this is part one. Also, I won't be counting any hacked blocks or blocks that require physical hardware like the LEGO Robotics block. There's a lot of blocks to get to, so subscribe and let's get right into it. Starting with number 145, Switch Backdrop and Wait. When I was making this list, I saw this block and realized it seemed to work exactly the same as the normal Switch Backdrop block. After a bit of research, I learned that there is one minor difference, but I couldn't think of any times where it could be useful, especially since I barely use backdrops anyway. 144. When video motion is greater than. This block is in the video sensing extension, which I've barely ever used. However, the few times I have used it, I've always used this instead, which does the same thing but better. 143. Language. This block is in the translate extension, and it returns the language that the user is using Scratch in. Like since my Scratch language is set to English, it returns English for me. It could be useful for translating projects, but I've never used it. 142. Turn counterclockwise. This one's kind of silly, but I don't think I've ever used this block. It's more of a personal preference, but I always just use the turn clockwise block and input a negative number. 141. If on edge, bounce. It can help with very simple projects, but it's too limited to be used in anything more advanced. I think Scratch should make this a dropdown so you can choose what you want this right to bounce off of. But for now, it's here. 140 and 139. The Think Block. These do the same thing as the Say blocks, except instead of a speech bubble, it's a thought bubble. I always use Say, so I'm putting these here. 138 and 137. Change Tempo and Tempo. Found in the music extension, these blocks work fine. I mostly make simple songs with the music extension, so I've barely ever used them. 136. The List Reporter. The List block returns the entire list in one long string of text. There are some use cases, but they're super specific. 135. Clear Sound Effects. The Clear Sound Effects block resets the pan and pitch sound effects, but the Set Effect to Zero block is better in my opinion. 134. Set Drag Mode. This block allows you to drag sprites around with the mouse. It's good if you're quickly making a game, except there are plenty of easy workarounds so people don't really use it much. 133 through 131. The Video Sensing Box. The Video Sensing extension is a good idea that works well, but it's very limited, so people don't use it often. Hopefully the Scratch team adds the Face Sensing extension from Scratch Labs sometime soon, because that would make this extension so much better. 130. Set Rotation Style. This block can be useful in certain places, such as when you're using the move block, or if you have to flip a sprite for some reason. 129. Loudness. This is the only block that lets you interact with the microphone. It's fun to play around with, and there are some cool projects that use it, but the block isn't advanced enough to be helpful most of the time. 128. Days since 2000. This block seem use seems useless at first, but it actually has one specific use. It's the most accurate way to track time in Scratch, so it can be used for things like super accurate FPS counters. 127 through 124. The Backdrop Blocks. These blocks work well. However, since I don't use backdrops much, they're fairly low on the list. 123 and 122. Hide and Show Variable. I like to hide and show variables using the checkboxes, but I still use these blocks frequently. I just wish there were more options, like changing the size or color of the variable. 121 and 120. Hide and Show List. The same as with variables, except that lists have the unique functionality that you can select and copy text from them. So I'm putting these blocks slightly higher. 119 and 118. The sound effect blocks. These blocks are, sp are specific, but effective when you need them. The pitch effect can also be used to pause or speed up audio, which is very cool. 117. Go to. While there are easy workarounds for this block, it's an easy way to move a sprite to another sprite or a random position. 116 through 114. The text-to-speech blocks. I like the text-to-speech extension. All the voices sound good, and it's a quick way to add a voice to your project. One thing they should add is the ability to have subtitles, though. And it would also be nice if there were more voices. 113 and 112. The glide blocks. The glide blocks work exactly how you'd expect them to, but I have them pretty low on the list because they can be very annoying to work with. 117. When this sprite clicks. This block makes it easy to create buttons or clicker games. 110. Translate. While I don't use the translate block a lot, 
It's a great addition to Scratch and gives an easy way to translate text to other languages in Scratch. 109. Color is touching color. It can be great for detecting collisions sometimes. 108. Current time. It's helpful for creating clocks, timestamps, and more. It can also be used to detect the user's time zone. 107. Mod. A lot of people don't know what this block does, but it's actually useful in a lot of situations. It basically detects whether a number is multiple of another, and I use it all the time. 106 and 105. Length and letter of. There aren't many blocks for working with text in Scratch, but these ones exist, and they work great. 104 through 100. The music blocks. The music extension is great. Some very impressive projects have been created that use it, and it can be fun to make songs with these blocks. 99. When key press. While I mostly use the key press boolean, this hat block can be a quick and easy way to detect if a key was pressed. 98. Touching color. This block can be helpful for collision sometimes, and it can also be great when you're working with pen and stamping. 97. Stop all sounds. The stop all sounds block does what it's supposed to, even if it's specific and doesn't come up much. 96 through 94. The volume blocks. These work exactly how you'd expect for changing the volume of music or other sound effects. 93 and 92. Set and change wire. These blocks, especially go to front or go to back, are used all the time in more advanced projects. 91. Distance to. This block isn't too interesting, but it can be helpful when you need it. 90. The stop block. This block is useful when you're working with clones or have a lot of scripts. The only annoying thing is that it doesn't work properly in custom blocks. 89. The math block. This is the block with absolute value, sine and cosine, and more. Between all the different things it can do, this block comes up all the time. 88 and 87. The timer blocks. The timer is very useful. It's obviously helpful for timing things in the project, but on top of that, it's used to detect the project stopping or for animations. It could be helpful if you could pause it though. 86. Turn clockwise. I use this block very frequently. I don't have much to say about it, except that I use the point and direction block more often. 85 and 84. The side blocks. These are useful for animation or for quickly displaying information. Overall, they're effective, except I think you should be able to change things like the color or size of the speech bubble. 83 and 82. Mouse X and Mouse Y. I use these in the majority of my projects, especially the more technical ones. 81. Move 10 steps. This one's a classic. The change X and change Y blocks are better in a lot of cases, but the move block is still necessary for many projects. That's all for part one. Part two will be coming out the day after part one. If you're watching this right when it comes out, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. Otherwise it's on screen now, and there will also be a link in the description. I'll see you in part two, and thanks for watching.